Hello everyone and welcome to Know with Joe. In this video I'm going to present a very interesting page of modern history, the Manhattan Project. This was a top secret United States government project during World War II, and was named after Manhattan because it was originally based in New York City. The project was created in response to fears that the Nazis were developing their own secret superweapons. The United States, Britain, and Canada formed a team of scientists to work on this. The team included some of the world's most famous scientists, such as Albert Einstein and Enrico Fermi. The goal of the Manhattan Project was to create a weapon that would end the war quickly and prevent the need for a costly invasion of Japan. But let's start from the beginning. On August 2, 1939, Albert Einstein wrote a letter to then-President Roosevelt informing him of recent developments in the field of atomic research and the potential for developing a weapon based on that research. The history of how that letter came to be written and what happened after it was sent, is one of the most important of the modern history. In the early 1930s, as Hitler was coming to power in Germany, many Jewish scientists began to emigrate to other countries. Einstein was one of them moving first to Princeton, New Jersey in 1933. He kept abreast of developments in atomic research and was disturbed by the possibility that the Nazis might develop a weapon using this new technology. In 1938, German chemists Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann discovered nuclear fission, which is the process of splitting an atom into smaller particles. This discovery set off a race among physicists around the world to see who could develop a working atomic bomb first. Einstein became friends with two other leading physicists working on this problem, Leo Szilard and Enrico Fermi. Together they realized that an atomic bomb was indeed possible and that the Nazis were probably working on one too. They also realized that if such a weapon were developed, it would be catastrophic for humanity. In 1939, Szilard drafted a letter to Roosevelt urging him to start an American atomic bomb project before the Nazis could develop their own. Einstein agreed to sign the letter even though he knew it might make him unpopular with the American public because he was a pacifist. The letter warned Roosevelt that, it may become possible to set up a nuclear chain reaction in a large mass of uranium, by which vast amounts of energy will be released. It urged him to provide funding for research into this possibility, on an adequate scale. The letter had an immediate effect. Roosevelt created an advisory committee on uranium and authorized $6,000 for research, a large amount of money at that time. Einstein never worked on the development of the atomic bomb himself, but his letter played a vital role in its creation. After the war, he expressed regret over this decision saying, Had I known that the Germans would not succeed in producing an atomic bomb, I would have never lifted a finger. The Manhattan Project was a massive undertaking involving tens of thousands of people and costing billions of dollars. It was also a top-secret operation, with few people outside those directly involved even aware of its existence. In the months and years leading up to the use of nuclear weapons, the project's scientists and engineers worked feverishly to design and build the world's first atomic bombs. The Manhattan Project would ultimately end up involving over 100,000 people, including some of the world's most renowned scientists, such as Enrico Fermi, Robert Oppenheimer, Edward Teller, and Leo Szilard. The project was headquartered at a secret location in Los Alamos, New Mexico, and involved research facilities in a number of other states, including Tennessee, Washington, and Illinois. Over the course of several years, the scientists and engineers working on the Manhattan Project made incredible progress in designing and building atomic bombs. In July 1945, they successfully tested detonations at sites in New Mexico and in the Pacific Ocean. While the Manhattan Project is most commonly associated with the creation of atomic weapons, it also played a significant role in developing nuclear power for peaceful purposes. The first nuclear reactor was built at Oak Ridge, Tennessee as part of the Manhattan Project, and reactors built as part of the project went on to power both submarines and aircraft carriers. After the war, many scientists involved in the Manhattan Project continued their work on nuclear energy at U.S. Department of Energy labs like Argonne National Laboratory near Chicago.
Robert Oppenheimer was an American theoretical physicist and professor of physics at the University of California, Berkeley. He is best known for his role as the scientific director of the Manhattan Project. After the Second World War, Oppenheimer became chair of the General Advisory Committee of the newly created United States Atomic Energy Commission, where he advised on both civilian and military uses of nuclear technology. In 1954, he was called before the Senate Subcommittee on Internal Security to answer questions about his past associations with left-wing causes and people. Faced with possible loss of his security clearance and consequent dismissal from his government positions, Oppenheimer chose not to defend himself at the hearing and his security clearance was revoked. He continued to work as a consultant to the AEC until his death in 1967. Oppenheimer was born in New York City on April 22, 1904, to German-Jewish immigrants Julius Oppenheimer, a successful textile merchant, and Ella Friedman, a painter. He had an older brother, Frank, and a younger sister, Joan. Oppenheimer was raised in a secular household and spoke German fluently as a child. The family often vacationed in Europe, exposing Oppenheimer to different cultures and languages. At the age of nine, Oppenheimer was sent to live with relatives in Schenectady, New York, while his parents remained in New York City. He attended the private ethical culture Fieldston School, where he first began to study science. He also became interested in astronomy and built a small telescope with which he observed sunspots. In 1918, Oppenheimer began attending Harvard University, where he initially studied chemistry. He soon switched his major to physics, and he graduated summa cum laude with a Bachelor of Arts degree in 1925. He then attended the University of Göttingen in Germany on a fellowship, where he studied under famed physicists such as Max Born and Niels Bohr. Furthermore, he returned to Harvard in 1927 to complete his PhD in physics under the supervision of Percy Bridgman. In 1927, Oppenheimer took a position as an assistant professor of physics at the University of California, Berkeley. He quickly established himself as a leading theoretical physicist, publishing papers on a variety of topics such as the scattering of electrons by atomic nuclei and quantum electrodynamics. In 1930, he took leave from Berkeley to attend the 5th Solvay International Conference on Physics in Brussels. There he met many of the world's leading physicists, including Enrico Fermi, Werner Heisenberg, and Paul Dirac. Oppenheimer's horizons expanded again in 1932 when he took a leave of absence from Berkeley to work at the newly created Institute for Advanced Study IAS, in Princeton, New Jersey. There he opportunities to work with some of the world's most brilliant minds, including Albert Einstein and John von Neumann. In 1933, he was appointed as the Institute's Director of Theoretical Physics. In 1939, Oppenheimer was approached by Lyman Briggs, head of the National Defense Research Committee NDRC, about working on a top-secret project to develop an atomic bomb. Oppenheimer agreed to work on the project, which was code-named the Manhattan Project, and he was appointed as its scientific director. He recruited scientists from across the country to work on the project at the secret Los Alamos National Laboratory in New Mexico. The Manhattan Project successfully developed the world's first atomic weapons. After the war, Oppenheimer became chair of the General Advisory Committee GAC, of the newly created United States Atomic Energy Commission AEC. In this role, he advised on both civilian and military uses of nuclear technology. He also continued to work as a consultant to the AEC until his death in 1967. One of Oppenheimer's most important contributions to physics was his development of the theory of quantum electrodynamics QED, which describes the behavior of electromagnetic radiation and its interaction with matter. QED is widely regarded as one of the most successful theories in all of physics, and it forms the basis for our modern understanding of light and electricity. Leo Szilard was a Hungarian-American physicist and inventor. He is noted for his contributions to the development of nuclear chain reactions and, as co-founder of the Committee for Nuclear Information, for his early advocacy of peaceful uses of atomic energy and control of nuclear weapons. Szilard initially formulated the idea of a nuclear chain reaction in 1933, 
while working on the atomic bomb at the University of California, Berkeley. He patented the idea of a nuclear reactor with Enrico Fermi in 1934. He also conceived the Szilard Wheeler model of thermonuclear fusion. In 1938, fearing that German scientists might develop an atomic bomb for Nazi Germany, Szilard persuaded fellow Hungarian émigré physicists Eugene Wigner and Edward Teller to contact Albert Einstein with the idea of writing a letter to President Franklin Roosevelt, urging the United States government to start its own atomic bomb research program. This led to the creation of the Manhattan Project, which built the first atomic bombs. Szilard later campaigned with Albert Einstein and others for the peaceful use of atomic energy and control of atomic weapons. He led the Szilard Petition Campaign, which attempted to persuade the United States government to stop nuclear weapon tests and development. He was interviewed in 1963 by Michael Amrine for the Atomic Oral History Project at Columbia University. Leo Szilard was born in Budapest in 1898 into a Jewish family. His parents were telegraph engineer Antal Szilard and his wife Karolina. He had two older sisters, Therese and Ilona. ID cards issued to him and his sisters described their religion as Calvinist. Szilard attended Catholic and Lutheran schools until high school. In 1918, he studied engineering at the Budapest Technical University but did not complete his studies due to financial difficulties caused by World War I. In 1919, he traveled to Egypt and worked as an engineer for the Nile Valley Authority. He then emigrated to the United States in 1921 on a ship bound for New York City. In the United States, Szilard initially worked as a financial journalist for brokerages in New York City. He later began working as an engineer and physicist. He worked with Enrico Fermi on the first nuclear reactor, and co-founded the Committee for Nuclear Information. Not only that, but he also conceived the Szilard-Wheeler model of thermonuclear fusion. Szilard was one of the first scientists to realize that a nuclear chain reaction could be used to create an atomic bomb. In 1933, he formulated the idea while walking on Southampton Row in London. He later recalled, As I turned from Southampton Row into Russell Square, I suddenly realized that if we could find an element which is split by neutrons and which keeps its neutrons together better than uranium, we would have an instrument of enormous destructive power. In 1934, he patented the idea of a nuclear reactor with Fermi. They both recognized that if such a reactor could be created, it would be possible to use it to generate energy or create an atomic bomb. Enrico Fermi was an Italian physicist and the creator of the world's first nuclear reactor. He is considered to be one of the most important physicists of the 20th century. His work in particle physics, nuclear physics, and statistical mechanics helped to revolutionize our understanding of the subatomic world. Fermi was born in Rome in 1901. His father was an officer in the Italian army, and his mother was a schoolteacher. Fermi showed an early interest in science, and he excelled in his studies. He graduated from high school at age 15 and went on to study physics at the University of Pisa. He received his doctoral degree in 1922, and his dissertation was on the phenomenon of beta decay. After graduation, Fermi remained in Italy for a few years, teaching at the University of Rome and conducting research at the Institute of Physics of the University of Rome. In 1926, he won a fellowship to study in the United States. He spent two years at Columbia University in New York City, working with some of the leading physicists of the time, including quantum mechanics founder Werner Heisenberg. In 1928, Fermi returned to Europe and took a position at the Institute for Theoretical Physics in Copenhagen, Denmark. It was there that he met his future wife, Laura Capon. The couple married in 1930 and had two children together. In 1934, Fermi was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics for his work on beta decay. He then returned to Italy and took a professorship at the University of Rome. Fermi continued his research into nuclear physics, and he played a key role in developing nuclear weapons during World War II. In 1942, he led a team of scientists who created the world's first nuclear reactor beneath the bleachers of a football stadium in Chicago. This reactor, known as CP-1, produced plutonium-239, 
which was used in the world's first atomic bomb test in 1945. After the war, Fermi returned to academic life at the University of Chicago. He continued to work on nuclear physics research and also taught classes on theoretical physics. He died of cancer in 1954 at the age of 53. Enrico Fermi was one of the most significant physicists of the 20th century. His contributions to our understanding of subatomic particles have helped to shape modern physics as we know it today. In early August 1945, the United States dropped atomic bombs on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, causing massive destruction and killing more than 210,000 people. The devastation led to Japan's surrender and brought an end to World War II. The decision to use atomic weapons against Japan was made by President Harry S. Truman. He was advised by a group of his closest military and civilian advisors, who concluded that the bombings were necessary to bring about a quick end to the war and save lives that would be lost in a land invasion of Japan. In July 1945, the United States, Britain, and China issued the Potsdam Declaration, which called for Japan's unconditional surrender. The Japanese government ignored the ultimatum, and on August 6, the United States dropped an atomic bomb on Hiroshima. On August 8, the Soviet Union declared war on Japan, and on August 9, the United States dropped another atomic bomb on Nagasaki. On August 15, Japan announced its surrender. On August 6, the Enola Gay, a B-29 bomber piloted by Colonel Paul Tibbetts, dropped an atomic bomb, which was nicknamed, Little Boy, on Hiroshima. The bomb exploded with the force of 16 kilotons of TNT, about equal to 1 million ton of dynamite, and destroyed approximately 5 square miles of the city. An estimated 70,000 to 80,000 people were killed instantly, and many more were injured or died later from burns or radiation poisoning. Three days later, on August 9, another B-29 bomber, nicknamed Fat Man, dropped a second atomic bomb on Nagasaki. This bomb was more powerful than Little Boy, exploding with 22 kilotons of TNT and destroyed about two square miles of Nagasaki. An estimated 40,000 people were killed immediately, with many more dying later from injuries or radiation exposure. On August 15, the same day that Fat Man was dropped on Nagasaki, Japan's Emperor Hirohito announced his country's surrender in a radio address to the Japanese people. This speech came to be known as the Jewel Voice Broadcast. The following day, August 16, the United States celebrated victory over Japan Day. World War II had finally come to an end. Although it resulted in Japan's surrender and saved lives that would have been lost in a land invasion of the country, President Truman's decision to drop atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki remains controversial. Some critics argue that such a monumental act of destruction was morally wrong and not necessary to win the war, especially since Japan was already close to defeat. Others point out that hundreds of thousands of innocent civilians were killed in these attacks, raising important questions about whether any use of nuclear weapons can ever be justified. This is all for today. I hope you liked this video and you enjoyed watching it. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel and activate the bell. See you next time.